Psycho Mizuno isn't a snake. I see lots of people on her videos say that they like her and consider her very underrated. I also see a lot of people claim that she's a two-faced snake who betrayed Makoto without a second thought like he was nothing but trash to her. <laughs> Are you serious? Just as a side note, this video will be a little different. I usually divide it into sections, but since this is a shorter video, I'm keeping it as one. And full disclosure, I'm a Sayaka stan, so prepare for a shit ton of bias and a lot more of an aggressive tone than usual. And to clarify, this isn't a video on Sayaka Maizuno being ridiculously underrated or looking into her character. That said, I believe that she is, I would like to do some kind of video like that someday, and I love her to bits and honestly relate to her very strongly to the point of kidding her. Fight me. Her desire to make everyone happy using her work, the fact that she has in fact done awful things to get where she is today, her anxiety over being forgotten, replaced, or irrelevant, like legitimate anxiety disorder, these sprites convey a panic attack ridiculously well. I relate to all of that, even if I'm a YouTuber rather than an idol. Well, they're both grueling careers where it's very easy to be forgotten or replaced and the industry would throw you out the door if you even took a small break and constantly hold you up to standards that you can never live up to because you are in fact a human being and not a god who can do no wrong. Where was I? Oh yeah, this isn't a video about analyzing Sayaka herself or saying whether she's a good character or not. I believe that she's excellent and severely underrated. Y'all can believe she isn't, that's fine. But a snake? That's inaccurate as fuck. So first, let's start with the dictionary definition of snake when applied to a person. Snake, in this context, is derived from the terminology snake in the grass and means a treacherous or deceitful person. Someone who'd happily throw others under the bus to service their own desires with absolutely no remorse. Of all the girls in Danganronpa 1, the only girls less qualified for that label than Sayaka are Toko and Sakura. I stand by the fact that literally every other girl is more of a treacherous or deceitful person serving their own desires, but their treachery goes ignored either because it's expected of their character archetype, or they survive long enough to get forgiven by Makoto. But Saika had the unfortunate one-two combo of having a nice girl next door archetype personality that was making questionable decisions, and dying before she could apologize to Makoto. Did she deceive others? Yes! But by all means, name one Danganronpa character that didn't do that in some way. Let's get into the meat of why people call Sayaka a snake. On the surface, seems obvious, right? Sayaka manipulated Makoto into a plan where she'd swap rooms with him, murder Leon, and frame Makoto for the murder. This would kill everybody except Sayaka if it succeeded and she got away with the murder. However, like many things in Danganronpa, surface level is not a great place to make your observations from. But people do it anyway. And there's way more going on under the surface. First off, let's look at exactly what motive Monokuma handed out. The motive was one practically custom tailored to push at Sayaka's buttons. Junko saw her as a severe threat as she and Makoto were getting along startlingly well. Between their combined charisma, they would eventually just be able to straight up convince everybody that killing was a horrible idea and that living inside the school until rescue or death was their best possible course of action. That would completely kneecap Junko's plans to show the symbols of hope killing each other. If they did start living happily inside of the school, it would show the outside world that hope could go on and the symbols of hope could cooperate and live in this hellish world and that it could heal from the tragedy. But Junko knew by pushing Saika just a little bit in the right direction by preying on her worst fears, she'd do exactly what she wanted, set off the killings. That motive was Saika's idol group's uncertain safety. The fact that their safety was jeopardized but not confirmed or denied was exactly what would push Saika far enough that she'd consider murder. If Saika believed her idol group was already dead, there'd be no reason to try and escape it to check on them. They're dead, and Saika's dreams with them. Junko likes to build up people's hopes and then crush them right in front of them. So, build up the hopes that you can still save your friends in your career, and crush them when you reveal the rules of the class trial. That's right, remember, Saika wasn't even aware of the existence of the trial! What Saika heard was kill someone without being caught. Now, to a seasoned Danganronpa veteran, the class trial being a thing seems obvious, right? Obviously, this would mean a class trial. Obviously, this would mean either the killer is executed, or the rest of the group is executed, and the killer gets to escape. 
Except that's not what got explained in the original Dong and Rampa. Monokuma's first explanation of the system is deliberately vague to catch everyone off guard. If someone were to disturb that peace, they and they alone would be able to graduate, and kill someone without being caught don't inherently allude to, Hey gamers, I'm gonna make you perform a trial in order to determine who the fucking murderer is, and if you fail, you'll all die and the murderer can go! They allude to a much simpler plan, kill and don't get seen doing the murder. This was dropped from subsequent games because, well, for story reasons, Junko's no longer around and they must simulate her consciousness with various devices, which will never be as good as having the actual Junko. And for gameplay reasons, because the trial is no longer shocking to the player. Or it shouldn't be, you really shouldn't be starting the game series at V3. I can't imagine that Sayaka's conscience would have been clear. I doubt she'd be able to sacrifice everyone's life upon finding out what the stakes were. Sayaka was already conflicted about what she was doing, which was why her plan failed in the first place. Not as Falero implied and everyone went along with due to misogyny and fuck it, because Sayaka is a weak, dainty girl who could be pushed halfway across the school by a stiff breeze. I don't think she'd be able to go the whole class trial without revealing herself. She'd be devastated. She'd be frustrated. But I don't actually believe Sayaka who remembered even before the killing game was announced that Makoto was in her junior high school and stuck out to her, who genuinely actually did treasure Makoto's friendship and only lashed out of an anxiety disorder that was severely triggered by the oppressive situation she was in, who in the If Light novel completely abandoned her plan as soon as she noticed Makoto was looking horrifically sick to take care of him, would actually be able to go through with her plan. She'd asked Makoto to reveal her crime to everyone else, and likely entrust him with ensuring her idol group was alright when he got out. I know that the comment section is probably going to be like, Oh, I wonder what would happen if Sayaka's plan did work and she was the killer and what the trial would have been like. And I agree! I wonder what it would have been like if a happy, optimistic girl with a musical talent and implied neurodivergence had a murder plot that succeeded and that she regretted, and she asked the protagonist to help reveal her crime to everyone else in order to save everyone else's lives to fight on another day against the mastermind. Wait. So, Saika was manipulated by the antagonist into acting rashly, and she didn't know the rules of the trial. But she still plotted a murder and took advantage of someone, therefore treacherous snake? Okay. If you're willing to call Kirumi, Kaide, Peko, and Gundam treacherous snakes too, and I know this fandom well enough to know that at least one of these characters doesn't fit that definition for you. As I said earlier, things in Danganronpa are a little more cloudy than good and evil. Even though the themes can seem clear-cut with the Hope vs. Despair talk, remember that Nagito is the twisted version of Hope, and the rest of Class 77 is the twisted version of Despair. The same goes for Sayaka. She's not fully good or evil, she's a human being with genuinely believable motives behind her actions, even if some of those actions are questionable. Compare the fear of losing everything you worked hard for since you were an elementary school student, and it's grueling work that you can't ever stop doing or you'll be completely thrown aside, because you're trapped in a situation horrifically out of your control, to Yeah, I think that stirring shit up constantly for no reason, getting two people directly killed and several others indirectly, and vaguely hinting at a somewhat possible human empathy and getting favoritism from the writers is enough to be called the greatest character in the Danganronpa franchise. Give me that trophy. Yes, I am salty about Kokichi. I'm glad that you noticed. You're probably wondering about the statement I made at the start. Toko and Sakura are the only female characters that were less fitting of the snake label than Sayaka. You're probably hearing that statement and going, um, what about Aoi? Kyoko? They're not traitorous bitches who stabbed Makoto in the back. Yes, they did! Now, I don't want you to take this as all three of these girls are treacherous snakes at all. That is the opposite of what I want to achieve. That said, Kyoko and Aoi had their backstab moments. With that one teeny little caveat in that they knew how the class trials worked because they were not only explained to them by this point, but they participated in several. Aoi knowingly tried to force an incorrect verdict in trial 4 when Sakura committed suicide. Whether blaming someone else or blaming herself, she tried to get everyone killed. But she's an upbeat character, she survives, Makoto forgives her, and she was acting under the same severe stress that Sayaka had been especially after losing the only person she really trusted in this whole mess, after it was revealed that that person was manipulated into working with the mastermind. So nobody really acknowledges this. 
Yoko was prepared to sacrifice anything to solve who the mastermind was in Trial 5. The whole murder was rigged in order for her to be sent down for a crime she didn't commit. But once fingers were pointed at Makoto instead, she voted him without remorse to save herself, despite knowing that the trial was rigged. She didn't know Alter Ego would save him either. That prediction of a 100% chance of Makoto surviving the execution, if she was considering it, was completely irrelevant to her decision to vote him. But minus being upbeat, apply everything from Aoi to Kyoko once again. Again, I am absolutely not saying that these two girls are also snakes. I purely put these events out on display to show the hypocrisy of singling out Sayaka and calling her a snake for being a panicked teenager with clinical anxiety in a traumatic situation. My partner also pointed out one last thing to me. How hypocritical it is for Leon's fans to excuse his actions and condemn Sayaka's. Leon did the exact same thing. Leon murdered Sayaka with only a manga to insist that it was an accident. Now, I like Leon even if that's no longer popular consensus, and I do understand Leon's fear as well. He was literally just attacked with a knife and wound up breaking someone's wrist. But, okay, admittedly, I haven't read the manga, so I don't know if Sayaka or Leon had the knife at this point. Editing errors here, and um, I've read the manga now, I have seen that Sayaka was the one with the knife, but I don't think that really matters, because either way, Leon just kind of looks like an idiot, because in this instance, he's walking back into a room with someone armed with the intent to kill him, and if he had the knife, then he's dra dragging a dangerous weapon into a room with a panicked person. But he still broke into the shower room to talk to her. Not only did he not have to do that, it might have been better if he didn't. He clearly had some intent to kill, whether before or after he got attacked. If the argument is self-defense, Sayaka literally broke the wrist of her presumably dominant hand and was huddled in the back of the shower in a complete panic. Celeste even points out as such. Leon had plenty of opportunities to stop, and he didn't. I will be completely honest that I don't entirely know how to conclude this video, but I will note this. A lot of people who accuse Psyker of being a snake just read up on some spoilers online and never actually played the game. If that's you, I hope that this video has helped you learn the truth. And also, play the games! You were gonna use that 20 hours the same way I'm using the time that I should spend doing your turn to die, browsing the internet looking at Among Us memes. There might be one more video this year, it might not get made till next year, let's just see where life takes us. Good night.